In the example that we were just looking at, we started with a sample size, sample mean, sample standard deviation, and then we used the t-interval tool to find a confidence interval. In this example, it's actually quite a bit different. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the necessary sample size so that our 90% confidence interval is going to have a very specific characteristic. And that characteristic is a margin of error that is exactly 20. And we can do this by manipulating the margin of error formulas that you saw earlier in the module 8 notes. And so when we do so, when we do that manipulation, we arrive at the complicated looking formula that you have right here. Um, and I can tell you that uh, I'm going to show you how to use this formula right now and we'll calculate the necessary sample size. But if you do want the details of why this formula is what it is, then I strongly suggest reading about it in section 8.2 in the ebook in Alex. Um, so as for the variables in the formula, we have n, which is the sample size that we're looking for. z alpha divided by 2 is the z score that has an area to the right of alpha divided by 2. S is the sample standard deviation. M is the margin of error that we want to have with our uh, confidence interval. And you can see we're going to put all that stuff together, square it, and, uh, and come up with our necessary sample size. And so uh, the very first step in, in going through and working with this formula is to uh, set 1 minus alpha equal to your confidence level. And so in our example, we're going to set 1 minus alpha equal to 0 0.9. And you can use algebra to solve this equation. I actually like to encourage my students to just think about this because sometimes algebra actually complicates things. You know, think about this like if you have a dollar, how much are you going to take off to end up with 90 cents? And if you just think about it like that, then you'd say, oh, well, I'm going to take off 10 cents. And so if you just reason through this, I think it's easier than resorting to algebra. So we get an alpha of 0.1. So the second step, what we're going to do is we are going to compute alpha divided by 2. And in our example, when we do 0.1 divided by 2, that takes us to 0.05. Okay. Step three, we are going to find z of alpha divided by 2. But we just found alpha divided by 2. So in our case, we are finding z of 0.05. So how do we find a z-score for which the area to the right is 0.05? Because that's exactly what that notation means. Again, this means find the z-score that has an area to the right of 0.05. So the best way to think about that is we can sketch a picture of a standard normal distribution. Remember the mean of a standard normal distribution is zero. And um, in this case, we're just saying, let's find the z-score that, ha that has an area to the right of 0.05. So all of this area over here would be 0.05. We did work with a tool back in module seven that allowed us to find Z scores like the one that we're looking for right here when we were giving the calculator an area to the left. So if the area to the right of our Z score of interest is 0.05, then we can do one minus 0.05 to get our area to the left of 0.95. And so all of this area right here the area to the left of our z-score of interest is 0.95. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, let's go to our tool from earlier, which was inverse norm. And we are going to set this up in the calculator where we say inverse norm, our area to the left is 0.95. And then in the standard normal distribution, our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. So let's do this. We're going to say second vars. We go down to inverse norm, and next to area, we are going to enter the area to the left, and then you can see that the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. So I already have 0 0.95 here, my mean is zero, my standard deviation is one, 
tail we've always left we've always kept this on left just to be consistent if you don't have this come up in your calculator that's totally fine as we've seen before um, it's the default is that the area that you enter here in inverse norm is always the area to the left of the z square of interest so we calculate this we end up with a z alpha divided by 2 of 1.6449 now i'm not going to round that at all i'm going to i'm going to use the entire thing from the calculator and uh, and I'm not going to round it at all when I go through the computation. So you could see that what we're going to do to figure out our n is we're going to take this z alpha divided by 2, which is what we have in the calculator right now. We are going to multiply that answer by s. Now s is our sample standard deviation in our particular problem. And in this particular problem, S is equal to 835.2. So let me note that here. S is equal to 835.2. And so I'm just going to say, okay, let's take my Z alpha divided by 2, like I have in the formula, and let's multiply that by 835.2. And then we also want to divide that by the margin of error. And the desired margin of error is 20. So you could see that I'm doing everything inside the parentheses at the same time. So I'm doing z alpha divided by 2, I'm multiplying it by s, and I'm dividing it by the margin of error. But then what we need to do is we need to take that entire thing and square it. And so if we take that entire thing and square it, we just press the x squared button, we get an answer of 4718.19. For the purpose of this problem, whenever we get an answer like this, we need to recognize that that, that would be the, the needed sample size to achieve our desired margin of error. But you obviously can't have a sample size that ends in a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're automatically going to increase it to the next whole number. So I'm not going to round this to 4,718. I'm actually going to round it to the next whole number. So it's going to go up to 4,719. So the answer in this particular question um, for our needed sample size is going to be this 4,719. That's what I would be entering into the calculator um, or, or into uh, Alex or, or whatever, um, you know, when you're answering questions. So let me, show, let me confirm this with you and show you that this in fact does work. So if we go into the stat menu, so we press stat and then we go over to test and down to T interval, that's number eight, um, we can plug in the relevant information. So we've got our sample mean of 130, our sample standard deviation of 835.2. But now we want to say let's say that we you know did this whole experiment with a sample size of 4719 and if we pr press calculate look at this right here so we get this really nice and clean confidence interval where the mean of the conf the mean the middle of the interval is 130 and then you could see that you're deviating exactly 20 on each side of 130 so you've got this nice clean margin of error of 20 and we were able to achieve that by increasing our sample size to 4,719. Let's take this question one step further. If the required confidence level in our problem were 95% instead of 90%, would the necessary sample size have been larger or smaller than 4,719? So there's an easy way to go about this question, and then there's more a more lengthy way of going about this question. The easy way is really just to think about it a little bit. You know, in this question we are saying, suppose that we want to come up with a confidence interval that's the exact same. We want to come up with a, an interval going from 110 to 150 because we want that margin of error to be 20. So if you want to have a higher level of confidence, you, if you want to go from 90% confidence to 95% confidence, that your true population mean is inside that interval. The only way that you can do that when your margin of error is still going to be 20 is if you have a little bit more information, if you have a little bit more data. And more information or more data equates to a larger sample size. 
So the long way of going about this question would be to go back through the process where we work with the formula. So we've already seen that the formula is n is equal to z alpha divided by 2 times s divided by m, and then we're going to square that whole thing. So the only thing that would change if you're changing your confidence level would be z alpha divided by 2. And what's going to happen is as your confidence goes up, I'll write this out here, as the confidence level increases, then what the effect is on z alpha divided by 2 is that that z score is going to be increasing as well. And so you can think about it then in, in terms of this formula, if this z score is going to be getting larger, and then s and m are the same as what they were before, and then you go to square this, then this entire quantity is a larger quantity than what we had previously. So in cases like this, if your confidence level were higher, and we still have that same margin of error, then we can conclude that the sample size needed to achieve that would be a greater sample size. Okay, hope this helps. And again, let your instructors know if you have any questions. Thanks.